What's up, Kawa gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So we got this cool problem here. So we have a diver at the end of a diving board, and we're trying to find basically the max normal strain in the diving board. So we're also given a cross section of a diving board. So to do this, we're going to be using this equation, the bending stress is equal to moment times radius over the moment of inertia. Then we're going to use the, bend the stress to find strain. So first, let's find stress. So what are we going to need? Well, we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need moment. We're going to need to find where the moment is maximized on the diving board. Then we're going to need to find the a moment of inertia of the diving board, which we're going to use this cross section for. That's going to help us find stress. So what's the first step? Well, let's find our support reactions by drawing a force body diagram. So we're going to have this kind of force body diagram. This is A, B, and C. Uh, right, this is 1.5 meters, and this is 2.5 meters. And let's draw our forces. So we're going to have, we have that A is a pin and B is a roller. So we're going to draw A going up. A at Y, then B, Y is also, or B is a roller, so that's going to go up. This is B at Y. And then we have C, which is our person, so that's going to be a weight going downward. So our given mass is 78 kilograms, and if we want to convert mass to a force, we're going to multiply it by gravity. So take that 78, multiply it by 9.81, and you're going to get that this force is 765.18 newtons. Okay, so we have this now. Um, now we need to figure out what these support reactions are. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, I forgot to draw A of X. However, you can tell uh, by this point, if you're statics, basically if we did some of the forces in the X, we're going to find A of X is equal to zero. So we really don't have to solve for it. So first of all, let's take the sum of the moments around A. Set that equal to zero, and that's how we're going to solve for B of Y. So for A, B of Y is pushing us counterclockwise, so we're going to have a positive B of Y multiplied by the distance of 1.5 meters. Then this, uh, this weight force is pushing us downward, it's going to make us want to go clockwise, so we're going to subtract that, 765.18, times its distance, which is 4. Set that equal to zero. So of course we're going to move that over to the other side, then divide by 1.5, you're going to find that B of Y is equal to 240 newtons. All right, then we're going to do some of the forces in the Y, right? You can tell some of the forces in the Y. We're going to find that AY is going to be equal to 765.18 minus this B of Y, right, to 2040. And we're going to find that A of Y is equal to uh, 1,275 newtons. But it's going to be negative, and the reason we get a negative number is because we drew it wrong on our image here. So what we find is that A of Y is actually supposed to point downward. So let's go ahead and just redraw A of Y is going down. Go ahead and erase that top one. Just so we get a nice, accurate diagram here. Okay, so we have these two good pieces of information. What do we use these for? Well, like I said, we're trying to find where the moment is maximized. So to do that, we need to draw a moment uh, diagram, basically. So let's go ahead and draw that moment diagram. Let's figure out our equations, first of all. So starting with this, we're going to need to make a cut at B, right? There's going to be two equations. There's going to be one from 0 to 1.5 meters. Then something's going to happen at B, and then there's going to be another one from 1.5 meters to 4 meters. So let's start with that 0 is less than x is less than 1.5 meters. And let's be clear, x is going this way. So it's starting at A and moving to the end. So if we took a cut, right, we're going to take a cut here, and we're going to block that off. Shear is going to point downward, and moment is going to point this way. So let's draw moment is going this way. So if we're going to find this equation for moments, we're going to set zero, or some of the moments, is equal to zero. And so the forces acting that are going to cause the moment are the actual moment we've drawn itself. So it's going to be moment one. And then we have A of Y. So A of Y is going to make us want to rotate counterclockwise. So we're going to add A of Y. So plus A of Y. And then it's going to be multiplied by the distance X. So that equals zero. So the equation we find, we plug in A of Y, is that moment one is equal to negative 1,275 X for moment one. So then let's go on to our next segment. Let me grab my chair. Now we're at 1.5. X is greater than 1.5, but less than four. Just roll over my foot. 
Okay, so now, right, we're taking a cut. Not there. Yet. But we're taking the cut here. So we're taking a cut, and we're drawing our moment this way. So now what do we have? Well, we have a of y, and that's going to be multiplied by x. So similar thing. If we take the sum of the moments and set it equal to 0, we get that moment 1 plus a of y times x. But this time we have b of y. So what's b of y doing? It's making us want to rotate uh, the other direction. So we need to subtract b of y. And then what's its distance going to be? Well, it's going to be the total distance x, but we're going to have to subtract that 1.5. So this part is going to become negative b of y x minus 1.5, and all of that's set to 0. So then if you plug in what you have for a of y, and we have the b of y, we're going to get that to moment. Uh, this is moment 2 now. 2 is equal to um, 765.18x minus 3060.75. 72, not 75. All right, so now we have these two equations. And we need to draw a graph to find out where it's maximized. So what's the graph going to look like? So we have, this is x in meters, and this is a moment in kilonewton, or just in newton meters, right? Okay, so let's graph this. So this is going to be a linear function, right? So we're going to start at 0, and we're going to go down until we reach that 1.5 meter point. Now, if you plug in 1.5 for this, you get negative 1,912.95 um, newton meters. So then we function over to this moment two equation. So we're going to do this until we reach four meters. And what is this going to make us do? Well, if you plug in 1.5 for this, you get the exact same number here. So this is going to be our starting point for our moment. And we know it's going to be a linear positive slope. And if you plug in 4 for this, you get 0. So we're going to start at this point and end at this point. And so this is what our moment diagram looks like. And as we can see, our maximum moment is going to be that number right there. So let's label this somewhere. Moment max. Oh my god, I can't write. Max is equal to 1,912.95. So this is what we did all of this work for, is just to find this number. So there we go. We can move on to the next part of this equation. So I'm going to go clean up the board, and we can move on. So now we need to find the moment of inertia. So to do that, we're going to use the parallel axis theorem. Uh, I don't think we need any of this anymore. Probably not. Should I erase that? We'll need that. OK, so we're going to use the parallel axis theorem for this. So if you remember this from statics, parallel axis theorem basically says that i is equal to i bar plus area distance in a y. So we're going to add all of these up for each of these three points. So we're looking at this diagram, to be clear. So we're going to have it's basically two sections. We're going to have this big, long bar. And then we're going to have these three individual little pieces here. And they're all going to have the same moment of inertia around the y-axis. So first of all, distance in the y, this is distance away from the centroid. So first, we need to find the centroid before we move on to the next part. So let's find the centroid of this figure. So the equation for centroid, y bar, right, is equal to the sum of basically the individual y bars over area. That's the sum of the areas. So let's go ahead and do that. So make our big fraction here. So our first one we're looking at is this big, long area here. So the centroid of this, or so let's do the area first. So the area is base 350 times height, which is 20. And then it's centroid, right? So we're taking centroid to be from the bottom up. This is y bar. So what's it going to be? Well, this is 30. So it's going to be 30 plus half of the length of this. So 30 plus half of 20 is going to be 40. OK, then we have these three little cubes. They're all going to have the same. So we're going to put in a 3 here. The base is 10. The height is 30. And then the centroid for each one of them is just going to be half of that 30. So we're going to do 15. Then we just have to add the areas. So the areas is going to be of the big one, 350 times 20 plus 3 times 10 times 30. All right, let me make sure I did this right. 3 times 10 times 30. I'm so lost. Can you read my own work? But yeah, I think I did it right. 
350, 20, 50, yeah, 40. So this is going to be equal to 37.15 millimeters. 37.15 millimeters. Okay, then we can find the centroid with this. So let's use the parallel axis theorem. So we're going around y bar. So first of all, um, i bar for these rectangles is 112 base height cubed. So we're going to have to add these up for each. So let's factor out the 112 and let's do that for each of them. So first of all, we have the big shape. So the base of this is 350. And the height of it is 20, so we're going to do 20 cubed. Then we have the three little shapes, so we're going to do plus 3. Then the base of them is 10. And the height of them is 30, so we're going to do 30 cubed. OK, so that's everything that goes in the 112. Then we have to do the area of distance in the y for the rest of it. So for the big one, we have the base is 350. The height is 20. And then distance in the y, well, what's that? That's distance from the centroid of this shape to the actual centroid of the whole figure. So we know the centroid of the whole figure is 37.15 millimeters, but the distance for the centroid for this actual shape is going to be 40. We found that earlier. So we're going to take basically 40 and subtract that from 37.15 to find the distance between them. And of course, we have to square that number. OK, so then what do we do next? Well, we have to add them for these three shapes. So let's go ahead and this is in the same equation, so plus 3. The base is 10, so we're finding area. The height is 30. And then the distance from the centroid of these, so the centroid of these is 15 millimeters. So we're going to take 15 and subtract it from the centroid of the whole shape, 37.15 squared. So this is our big equation. Then we're going to get that i bar, or just uh, i, a moment of inertia, is equal to uh, 799 times 10 to the third millimeters to the third, and then we're going to go ahead and convert it to meters to the fourth. Or I mean, yeah, 10 to the third millimeters to the fourth. We're going to convert it to meters, so we're going to get 7.99 times to the negative seventh meters to the fourth. So if you don't know how to convert to meters from millimeters, it's just 10 to the negative 12 to get to the fourth. Okay, so we have all of this work. Now we can erase all of this again because I only have so much space. I really want to keep that. Okay. Yeah, we can get rid of it all. And now we're going to go back to our equation final thing. We're going to find bending stress. So bending stress, let's just plug in our numbers. So we found the moment's maximum to be uh, 1912.95. C, that is radius, basically from the centroid. So we're looking here, the uh, distance basically the, furthest to, the further away you go from the centroid, the bigger the bending stress is. So this whole thing is 50 millimeters tall. So the furthest we can get away from the centroid is that 37.15. So we're going to have to convert that 0 0.037.15, right? Not this point here. So this is now in meters. And then let's plug in our y bar for the denominator, 7.99, 10 to the negative 7. Make sure I did this right. Yeah, it looks good. And we're going to find our bending stress max is equal to 88.9 times 10 to the sig pascals. So this is our max bending stress. Now we need to convert to bending strain. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase that just so I have a little bit more space. So we know that stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times strain. So we can basically find strain by taking the stress, dividing it by modulus of elasticity. So let's do that. 88.9 times 10 to the sixth. Over the modulus of elasticity, 125 gigapascals, 125 times 10 to the ninth, right? Yep. You can find that our strain is equal to 0 0.711 times 10 to the negative, two, negative 3 millimeters per millimeter period. And there we go, we found our normal strain. So wow, this is a very long problem, right? This is probably one of the first uh, mechanics and materials problems I've done on the channel. So thanks for sticking around for it. Uh, if, none of the, if this makes sense to you, feel free to check out the rest of my videos. Hopefully those make a little bit more sense. Um, good luck on your mechanics and materials. Stick in there, you got it. I'll see you in the next video, peace.